Good morning, everyone. For today's online class, we, the group three, will report about what is prescriptive grammar. So, what is a prescriptive grammar and its scope? A prescriptive grammar is a set of rules about language on how people think language should be used. With this, according to linguist Elsie DePrytery and Chan Langford, that there is a right or wrong language if we talk about prescriptive grammar. A person who dictates how people should write or speak is called a prescriptivist or a prescriptive grammarian. Tracing back our history, the rise of prescriptive grammar was started in the 18th century. As cited by David Cristal, that in 18th century, in that time, language was seriously unwell. It was suffering from a raging disease of uncontrolled usage. This called the urgency to awaken all prescriptive grammarians to invent many rules as possible, which distinguish polite from impolite speech. Rules that profounded with maximum authority and severity, and given plausibility by the claim that it were going to help people to be clear and precise. In connection, Sometimes, these rules are archaic rules that are left over from earlier in the history of the language. These rules are abandoned by most in the language community, but persist in the use by a select few. Example is the proper use of who. So, greetings everyone. I am Joy Marie Lumbaca and today... I'll be giving you some examples of sentences under prescriptive grammar. So first we have here, who did you arrest and whom did you arrest? So in this case, many will claim that only the sentence 2 is grammatically correct. This belief derives from an older version of English in which the nominative and accusative cases both subject and object respectively were more important. Today, these cases only persist in pronouns and even there, they are slowly dying off. According to traditional prescriptive grammar, who is only subjective whereas whom is objective. You can actually figure out when to use whom by using a simple test. Ask yourself if the sentence is referring to someone as the subject or the person who is taking the action. For example, you could ask who ate the cookies. If the answer is that he or she did it, or the person is the subject, use who. On the other hand, if your question needs to be phrased in such a way that the person becomes the object, a situation where the answer would be him or her, then use who. So we have here other examples, whom do you believe and who made these burritos? So the first question, whom do you believe, the person becomes the object, thus making it objective, while the second question, who made these burritos, the person is the subject, thus making it subjective. Good day, I am Mariel Digamola and I am the next reporter and I will be reporting the word me and myself in a sentence. So the first sentence is the word me. I saw me in the mirror and I looked good. The second one is the word myself. I saw myself in the mirror and I looked good. The word me in the first sentence is used as an object. Well, the second sentence, which is myself, is a reflexive pronoun used when you are the object of your own action. There could be speech communities that find sentence one grammatical, but generally speaking, English speakers would not utter sentence one purposefully. There is an observable rule in English that requires reflexive pronouns to be pronounced as an anaphor rather than as a standard object pronoun. 
So I have here some examples of me and myself in a sentence. The word me is used when it's the object of a sentence. The object is who and what is receiving the action. So for example, the boss gave Kyla and me a promotion. So the subject there is the boss, while the object is Kyla and me because they are the one who receives a promotion. So myself is a little different and it's what's known for reflexive pronouns. It's grammatically correct to use myself when you are both the subject and the object of a sentence. So for example, I see myself as a senior manager one day or I treat myself to a holiday. In both of these cases, you are the sub object of your own action and myself is the right word to use. So given that me and myself are both pronouns and can both function as the object of a verb, choosing the correct one is not always easy. They are used in different ways though me is a personal pronoun while myself is a reflexive pronoun. So when you look at the mirror, you can see your reflection of yourself. According to Tamasi and Anthiao, prescriptive grammar is essential as it helps people use formal English speech and writing. In addition, those who follow it or those who endorse to follow it claim that doing so will help to streamline one's words and make one's prose more elegant. Now, let's proceed to the advantage and disadvantage of prescriptive grammar. First, in teaching prescriptive grammar, it creates formal writers and resources. Prescriptive grammar is a set of rules on how language should be used, so meaning it focuses on the correct usage of the language. Thus, it creates formal writers and more reliable resources. Second, teaching prescriptive grammar is beneficial for both non-native teachers and learners as it has defined rules of language that help reduce confusion. Exactly, prescriptive grammar is really important. Like for example, in implementing mother tongue based multilingual education in primary schools, wherein teachers used mother tongue as the medium of instruction. This new language policy gives difficulties for both teachers and the learners. However, with the use of the rules of language, Teachers slowly cope up the challenge wherein they could organize properly the content of their lessons that helps their students easily understand the topic or the lessons. Now, let's proceed to disadvantage of prescriptive grammar. Prescriptive grammar might keep non-native speakers wondering and confused when they talk with a native speaker, as they might realize that some natives do not write or speak with these rules. So, if students wasn't able to understand the rules on how language should be used, the speaker will end with confusion. Like for example, implementing mother tongue-based multilingual education or MTBMLE in primary schools, most children encounter difficulties. They wondered and confused of the words that is unfamiliar or unknown for them. The main factor why children encounter these difficulties is because of different language they used. Some students can comprehend or understand what native speakers speak while others can't, as well as their way of writing, since native and non-native speaker use different rules in writing and speaking. Here are the rules in prescriptive grammar. Rule number one, be sure to never split an infinitive. This is a rigid rule that that should be broken. Split infinitive occurs when there is an adverb between two parts of infinitive. For example, what are you waiting for? Instead, in this rule, we should never split an infinitive. To do this, try 
to place adverb either before or after the phrases they modify whenever possible. So instead of saying the sentence, what are you waiting for? We could replace or rephrase it into, for what are you waiting? Rule number two, prepositions are bad to end sentences with. A preposition by its nature indicates that the other word will follow it. Hence, prepositions form relationships between words, the object of the preposition, and the other words or word in a sentence. For instance, Let's go home after dinner. I can't decide between soda or juice. In this rule, we should avoid ending sentences with prepositions. To do this, we could observe in a sentence that there is relative clause, then we'll add pronoun, then move the preposition. For example, the sentence World War II is the era I am focusing on. Instead of saying that, we could rephrase it into World War II is the era on which I am focusing. Another example, she's the girl I'm going to dance with. Instead, she's the girl with whom I'm going to dance. These prepositions fall between or within the sentence, not at the end, but sometimes other prepositions end or find themselves at the end. Good day, ma'am and classmates. I am Kristen Jane Gonzaga, and I will be discussing about the third and fourth rule of prescriptive grammar. The third rule is passives are best avoided. In prescriptive grammar, prescriptive grammar speakers should not use passive voices. For example, the meeting was held by the university. Instead, we should write or say the university held the meeting. This circumlocution and undue emphasis on subtlety may not be as effective way of getting your message across when more direct and concise framing is preferable. In prescriptive grammar, you don't need to use unneeded words. Simple words can be used to construct sentences effectively to be understood. It is preferred to make it direct and concise because prescriptive grammar should be short and brief. Good day everyone. I'm Mary Visviel and I'm going to discuss to you the last rule in prescriptive grammar which is you should not start a sentence with a conjunction like and, or, but, and yet. For example, many people fear crashing in a plane, but riding in a car is actually more dangerous. Here's another one. And let every other power know that this hemisphere intends to remain the pastor of its own house. Conjunctions are a small class of words used to connect word, other words, phrases, and clauses. But according to Alison Venest, the provision against opening a sentence with a conjunction is one of the most persistent grammar myths of all time. In writing, you can you can sometimes begin a sentence with a coordinating conjunction. You do this to make the sentence seem more dramatic or forceful. As such, there is no reason why conjunction can't also be used to join one completely different sentence with one another.
So what are the difference between descriptive and prescriptive grammar? A descriptive grammar is built up by analyzing how speakers use the language and reducing the rules they are following, while a prescriptive grammar is a set of explicit rules for using language that are taught or enforced so that people will use the language in a particular way. Typically, the rules are handed down from generation to generation. Both kinds of grammars have their places in the world. Activists include school teachers, copy editors, and others charged with correcting people's use of language. Also, some people who have just strong opinions on the topic. Prescriptivists start with the assumption that there is one correct way to use language and men in correct ways. The correct version is actually the language's prestige dialect, especially its written version. For example, standard American English. To oversimplify a bit, the prestige dialect of a language is generally the one used by educated people in the big cities. cities. Prescriptivists include school teachers, copy editors, and others charged with correcting people's use of language. Also, some people who have just strong opinions on the topic. Prescriptivists start with the assumption that there is one correct way to use language and many incorrect ways. The correct version is actually the language's prestige dialect, especially its written version. For example, standard American English. To oversimplify a bit, the prestige dialect of the language is generally the one used by educated people in the big cities.